you little monsters, this little monster girl, Desi, coming at ya. And today I got a brand new monster bite for you guys to enjoy. So I hope those of you who are living by big bodies of water are going to be careful, because today we'll be talking about the fin folk. And after you hear what I have to say about them, I hope you'll definitely be more careful when being by the seashore. So, let's get started. From what I've read, the finfolk are a race of mysterious, ship-shaping sea-dwellers who, while being similar to mermaids in a lot of aspects, are pretty different. In the spring and summer months, they have a reason to leave their homeland, and that's to swim to the surface to search for a human to capture and drag below the waves. But don't worry, if this happens to you, you won't be eaten. At least I don't think so. You see, the finfolk kidnap unsuspecting fishermen or young men and women who are alone, usually nearby the shore, and then force them into serving them as a spouse for the rest of their lives, and basically doing whatever spouse duties they have. But luckily, the finfolk homeland and the hidden island which they reside are said to be really pretty. So that's sort of an upside if you don't mind never leaving. While they're sometimes compared to the gentle nature silkies, who seek out humans for romance and companionship, the finfolk aren't very friendly, and they don't really ask before they drag you into the water. If you're wondering what the finfolk are supposed to look like, in most stories they're said to look more like humans, and in others they're more fish-like. But considering they can change their forms, I guess it doesn't really matter. But either way, the Finn wife is said to be very beautiful. And she usually has different kinds of abilities, most of which are usually put to use when looking for a preferably human husband. Since if she marries a Finn man, it usually results in a rather abusive relationship. That aside, she would want a human husband because she slowly drains him of his life force, keeping her young and beautiful longer. If she were to marry a thin man, after about 70 years, her looks would worsen until she turned into a thin wife hag, which is said to be an extremely unsettling creature. So you gotta admit, she's got her priorities straight, I suppose. The Finn man, on the other hand, is said to be very tall and thin, with a gloomy and stern face. Since they disguise themselves as human fishermen, they also have their own boats. And using their powers for illusion, they're able to turn their boats invisible, as well as make an army of phantom boats if needed. But they can also travel great distances in a short amount of time, making them extremely difficult to catch. A thin man usually avoids interacting with people unless he's looking for a wife, and he's seriously territorial over his waters, and will pretty much wreak havoc and make a mess of any boat who, invo who invades his territory. And it kind of sounds like these guys need to go to anger management or something. Well, I mean, I'd probably do the same thing, but that's not the point. It's usually said that the only way to keep him from doing this is to draw crosses on the side of your boat. But anger issues aside, the Finn men are actually really crafty and often cheat other men out of their silver and sometimes even their wives. They all use different methods of luring and abducting people, though the most common methods are disguising themselves as floating plants, fishermen, or even mermaids. And once the person they have their sights on are close enough, they'll drag them under the water, usually kicking and screaming. And the fact that thin folk are really territorial and seriously greedy doesn't really help adding to the fact they're serial kidnappers. But luckily, they do love silver coins and jewelry more than humans. So hopefully, if you're ever captured by one, You'll have some silver or jewelry on you to distract them. If not, you're pretty screwed. Because these suckers are strong. But on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd definitely rank these guys as a 7 for monsters that I've had fun researching.
They were pretty fun to learn about and read about, and there are a few sites that have different theories on them that are just made for fun, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And that's all we have time for today. Did you guys enjoy the video? If you liked it, please like, share, or subscribe if you haven't already. And because this channel has reached 100 subscribers, though because I use a phone for everything, I don't think using it for a live stream would work very well. So I'll answer all your questions if you have any at the end of my next video. And with all that said and done, I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye! Thank you.